everyone, Pushing Up Roses here, and today I have a very fitting holiday special for my channel, a made-for-TV musical called Mrs. Santa Claus, starring Angela Lansbury. And before you ask, I did check to see if there were any Murder, She Wrote Christmas episodes, but sadly, I think full-on homicide is a little too morbid for anything holiday-related. The reason I'm covering this film is because I have these very faint memories of watching it on VHS tape at my aunt's house one winter, and I remember enjoying it, but after seeing it that one time, I never saw it again. It's weird because it did very well. It debuted on CBS on December 8th, 1996, and on top of having a great cast with well-known names, it also had an experienced director, writer, and composer. And yet, when I think about movies to watch over the holidays, this doesn't come to mind. Charlie Brown Christmas? Yeah. A Muppet Christmas Carol? Definitely. Love Actually? Yeah. Mrs. Santa Claus is like an old song that hit number one, and it was amazing the year it came out, but after that initial success, it just goes away. Then when you discover it later on, you're like, wait, this was a hit? When? So I decided to give this movie another go because I remember being quite charmed by it when I was a kid. Though a lot of things charmed me as a kid, if I'm honest. I used to spend my time coloring rocks with cheap crayons. So here we go. I want the world to know there's a Mrs. Santa Claus. It was directed by Terry Hughes, an excellent choice. He also directed the televised version of Sweeney Todd, which also starred Angela Lansbury, and over a hundred episodes of The Golden Girls. He's won several awards, so this bodes well for Mrs. Santa Claus. The script was written by Mark Saltzman, who had previous experience with Sesame Street and a variety of musicals. He's won seven Emmys, so now we're pretty much guaranteed that this will be a good movie. Only thing left is the music, which was all written by Jerry Herman. His career is also outstanding, but his most famous work is probably Hello, Dolly, which I love. I love, love, love Hello, Dolly. What are you talking about? Goodbye, goodbye. And Angela Lansbury was, and still is, very active in film and musical theater. I'm assuming I don't need to tell you who Lansbury is, but in case you're not familiar, she's a British actress whose career spans several decades. You may know her as Mrs. Potts from Beauty and the Beast, Jessica Fletcher from the greatest television show ever made, Murder, She Wrote, and her most well-known work is probably Positive Moves. Classic. Oh, and one more tidbit, the costume design was done by Bob Mackey. What in the hell is he doing working on a made-for-TV musical? You know who else he designed for? Fucking Cher. As we begin the movie, we're introduced to the main elf, Arvo. Hey, it's the Evening Shade guy! Yeah, you remember Evening Shade, right? No? No one? They sing a song about making toys alongside Mrs. Claus, whose first name is Anna, as they are getting ready for Santa's trip. I am loving Mrs. Claus's hairdo. It reminds me of Gerda from Gabriel Knight, which is such an obscure nerd reference that I almost feel embarrassed. Almost. Arvo engages in some brief chit-chat after the other elves leave, asking her if she has any plans. What about you, Mrs. Claus? Another Christmas Eve alone? You want to spend it with me, the evening shade guy? She goes in to check on her husband, who is completely bogged down with mail. He's also totally preoccupied and seems to be neglecting her new ideas for a more efficient navigation plan. She gets a little irritated, then expresses that she wishes she could help him out. He responds like a petulant child and says that he needs to be the one to do it because he's the only one who can do it right. Now call me old-fashioned. Okay, you're old-fashioned. Oh my god, look at all of these antlers all over the workshop! They're on the stairs and they make up the chandeliers. These all from the reindeer they've had? Oh my god, don't let them see it! Because she is feeling unwanted and bored, Anna decides to hitch up the reindeer and test out the new map she designed herself. A storm rolls in and she's forced to make an emergency landing in New York. Poor Cupid didn't take the unexpected landing very well. Oh, you've hurt your poor leg! Oh. Well, guess we have more antlers for the stairs now. Luckily, there's a stable nearby run by an Italian immigrant named Marcello. He takes Cupid in and says he'll be ready after one week of rest. Somehow, she convinces him that the reindeer are for a Christmas pageant and that she hails from the north. Ah, Signora di North. Well, actually, uh... <laughs> Yes, I, I'm Mrs. North. <laughs> yeah, she also convinces him that her name is Mrs. North. What is it about Angela Lansbury that makes for such trusting characters? You just want to believe everything she says. Marcello shows her around town, specifically Avenue A, a multicultural, diverse area where everyone gets along in perfect harmony. The story is set in the 1910s and the fashion and settings reflect that. This is also where you can really see all of the Hello Dolly influence. Exciting choreo, strong songs and singing, and New York, again. 
As they go down the street, a bagel cart passes by, and it made me want a bagel. I felt it imperative that I tell you that part. Marcello brings her to a boarding house she can stay at, but of course she has no money. Why do people never bring money or purses with them when they travel? I just watched Noelle recently, which has a similar premise now that I think about it, and she also didn't have money. Who travels without it? The woman who runs the house, a Jewish immigrant named Mrs. Lowenstein, says she can get a job and pay her back later. Oh my god, this is moving really fast, but Anna doesn't mind. She she loves the town and the people and can't wait to see more since she's only ever seen the workshop and snow. Staying at the boarding house is also an Irishman and his daughter, Nora, who is a bit of a troublemaker. She especially likes harassing the police, as one does. Anna takes a liking to her and decides to cover for her when Officer Doyle is searching the house. Hey, why did you do that? It so happens that... I'm cool as hell. Nora's dad works all day, and her mother and baby brother are still in Ireland until they can make enough money to bring them to the US. She says she can take care of herself, though, as she has a job at a toy-making factory. How convenient for the plot! Anna is brought on as the supervisor of Tavish Toys run by Augustus Tavish. She quickly sees the employees are all children, working under horrible conditions and being instructed to make cheap toys that won't last. The company's motto is, it only has to last till Christmas. Tavish is played by Terrence Mann, who is a Broadway veteran. He was the original Rum Tum Tugger in Cats. You know, the sexy one. I can't believe there's a sexy one in Cats. He's got a bit of a Tim Curry vibe going on, specifically from Rocky Horror, so I was not shocked to find out that man played Frankenfurter in the play's Broadway revival from 2000. He's extremely talented and makes for a vile character in this film. Oh, just a little hug. Get that bear away from me. Dang, he even looks a little like Tim Curry. Also, I wonder what Tim Curry would be like as Rum Tum Tugger. <laughs> These toys really do look extra terrible. Instead of buying red balloons, they are dying them. The kids don't trust Anna at first, but they warm up to her after she starts singing them a song called Almost Young. It expresses that just because she's old in number doesn't mean she can't do a little jig. It's the catchiest song I've ever heard that explicitly uses the word dirge. But when my dirge is sung... Anna approaches Tavish and explains to him that there's no heat, and the quality of the toys is horrible and unacceptable. He tells her not to worry about it because they make him money, and money makes him happy, and who cares about toy quality? After all... It only has to last to Christmas. He locks himself in his office, then Anna boldly promises to do something about Tavish. She doesn't know what yet, but the kids cheer her on and we get a reprise of Almost Young. Sing my dirge! Now that she has a job, she is able to buy some stylish new digs. So fancy. It reminds me of Meet Me in St. Louis. Clang, clang, clang went the trolley. Ding, ding, ding went the bell. Since this is a period piece, it does touch on issues from that time, child labor being one of them and women's rights being the other. Mrs. Lowenstein's daughter, Sadie is a suffragette who Anna befriends, and they collaborate on protest ideas to improve the state of Tavish toys. Anna also helps Sadie to convince the women on Avenue A to join the march to Union Square and stand up for their rights, helping them to realize their strength and potential. We get a song, which is just one of the previous songs from earlier with altered lyrics, about getting the right to vote. It's no sister suffragette, but it'll do. Votes for women! Marcello, who is in love with Sadie, asks her out on a date, and she responds in song. It's one of the catchiest in the entire movie, but the lyrics are something to be desired. She just goes on and on about things that don't commonly go together. An onion roll at a Mayfair tea, a bowl of borscht, and a pizza pie. Corned beef and cabbage topped with mayonnaise, we don't go together at all. Hey, that sounds pretty good. There's also a song about whistling. Why are all these musicals insisting I whistle to feel better? Whistle? <whistles> when you feel that no one is near. Just whistle while you whistle. Whistle a happy tune. Give a little whistle. Through Sadie, Anna learns about factory slowdowns and convinces the kids to use it to protest Tavish toys. The idea is to work very slowly until production comes to a halt, but the kids are nervous. What if we get scared? Then all you have to do is whistle. What? No! After the factory slowdown fails due to Tavish threatening to have the kids work on Christmas, Anna now has to find some other way to save them from their predicament. Hmm. Corky Tavish. Is it weird that this isn't the only time Angela Lansbury has called someone Augie? So I hear you're the man that I should talk to. 
Okay. Meanwhile, after a few days, Santa finally notices that his wife is missing and expresses precisely one emotion about it. This. It's a mood, all right. Santa has no fucks to spare. He can't really go off to find her because he only had one sleigh and one set of magical reindeer. I can't believe he doesn't have any backups. This is really poor planning on his part. Good news is he figures out that he loves his wife. Good for him? But Anna can't go back just yet. She still wants to help out the kids working at Tavish Toys. Cupid is still healing and she has a party to attend. This really is turning out similar to a Murder, She Wrote episode. Just like J.B. Fletcher, Anna gets into everyone's life problems and attempts to solve them. Except no one dies. Since the slowdown didn't work, Anna suggests a strike where the kids take to the streets and tell people about their deplorable conditions and the poor quality of the toys. It works flawlessly and opens the public's eyes to child labor. Tavish takes it well. Yeah! While at a policeman's ball, Anna finds out that Cupid is all better and she is given honors by Sadie. Geez, she really did a lot in the few days she was in New York. She joined the suffragettes, marched to Union Square, led a protest, and called for child labor laws. She even played matchmaker a couple times. Damn straight the world should know there's a Mrs. Santa Claus. But she forgot one person, Augustus Tavish. Okay, so bear with me because the ending to this movie is just a teensy bit contrived. Anna realizes it's time for her to go back to the North Pole and bids goodbye to Nora, who is heartbroken and asks if she'll ever see her again. Oh, I hope so. But until then, remember. All you have to do is whistle. As Anna is leaving, Tavish attempts to steal the sleigh and the reindeer that were kept at the stable, then tells Anna that he knew she was Mrs. Claus all along. What? How? Because the Claus family is known for their activism? I know she's experienced in toy making, but going from toy maker to Mrs. Santa Claus is a pretty hefty leap. Suddenly, Anna realizes his name is familiar. He had written to Santa asking for a teddy bear when he was a child and he was given one, but his stepbrother stole it and Tavish was ruined. So ruined, in fact, that he wanted to ruin everyone else's Christmas, including this one. Yes, it's true. I, I can't deny it. Really? 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 Your teddy bear was stolen, so you got into child labor because of a teddy bear. I mean, this is easily rectified. Anna gives him a new teddy bear, just like the one Santa gave him years before, then says, it's not the gift that matters, it's the love behind it. And he is instantly changed. You can pinpoint the exact moment where his heart grows several sizes. Meanwhile, Santa is having the most miserable Christmas Eve ever. Not only is Anna not there, but the cocoa that Arvo makes is terrible. Anna gets back home just in time for Santa's trip, and he is relieved to see her. While she was gone, he realized how neglectful he had been and invites her to join him on his journey using her new map. The movie ends with them joyously singing together and delivering presents. Right, final thoughts. I watched this movie twice so I could decide if I really enjoyed it or not. The first time I was slightly underwhelmed, but the second time I appreciated it more for some reason. It's actually a really decent musical that has a lot of interesting storylines and characters. The shining star of the film is Angela Lansbury, who brings joy and expression to every moment and every song. The score is not as memorable as other beloved musicals, but it's fun and fitting for the movie. I like the choreography, the sets, and the early 1900s costumes. It's lighthearted and kept my attention. It's also a breath of fresh air to see a holiday movie tackle deeper subjects, versus the same old gotta find a fiancé for Christmas so I can please my overbearing family plotline, which seems to be all the rage right now. It's a little less fluffy than the thousands of Christmas movies that have the personality of a head of cabbage. This is one of the only Hallmark family movies I found that doesn't have an emphasis on a love interest or centers around a young, hot protagonist that needs to learn the meaning of Christmas. In fact, even though this takes place during Christmas time and the main character is Mrs. Claus, the plot of the movie is so much more than that. We have an older woman who is experiencing her own life and finding strength in who she is, learning that her contributions to the world matter, and helping other women to stand up and be independent. For I have gifts of my own to offer the world. This is the most feminist I've ever seen, Mrs. Claus. Usually they're a little more 
matronly. Not Anna though. Look at her rock that red dress. Though I gotta admit, this film isn't particularly memorable. The songs are fun, but they aren't fantastic and they don't stay in the public conscious. Some of the songs are reused melodies with different lyrics, so there isn't much variety either and the conclusion is absurd. Tavish is an absurd villain to begin with, so maybe it's appropriate, but I could not believe how quickly things got resolved between him and Anna. Also, did she just happen to have a teddy bear in her cloak? I guess you never know when someone needs one. However, I did like watching this as an adult. If you're looking for a lesser known holiday special that tackles a few adult issues and you like beautiful costumes and exciting choreo, then I'd suggest giving this movie a shot. I'm a little sick of the usual Nightmare Before Christmas and Love Actually viewing, so this movie mixed it up for me a little. I hope you enjoyed this video and I wish you all the happiest of holidays. And remember, when you're feeling low, then all you have to do is whistle. And you'll find me holding your hand. Hey everyone, thank you for watching my video on Mrs. Santa Claus. If you're interested in more content from me, I have it. But first I would like to throw out my Patreon campaign. Patreon is how I am able to keep my show going and helps support me financially. And I have a few rewards on offer, so check it out if you feel the desire. If not, a wonderful holiday gift would be a like, retweet, or comment. If you aren't sure if you want to sub to me and need more content to decide, then I got you. On the left, I have a comprehensive review of Miss Fisher's murder mysteries with an emphasis on character analysis. And on the right, I have my other holiday video that tackles a silly episode of The Golden Girls. Thanks again, and as always, I'll see you in the next one.